This is Julie Larson Green. Right, from who, Microsoft. You may remember came here and also demoed uh, Office 2007. Right. And she was involved in the design of that, and she's involved in the design of what she's about to show you. Well, we're super excited to be here to show you a little sneak peek of some of the things we're doing in Windows 7. So last year when you were here, you saw Surface Computing, and you saw some of the things that you could do in a new, more natural way of interacting with us on the Surface with your computer. And that and was I, that big $10,000 table. Exactly. And yeah. so what I'm here to show you today is kind of the evolution of that on the PC with multi-touch. So um, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to click here. This is the paint program uh, running on Windows 7. And as I go through and I just draw with my finger, I can draw with a second finger. I can draw with multiple fingers. And you can start to see how you might interact a little bit differently with the computer than you've done in the past. So, well, what I'm running on here, right here, is a Dell Latitude XT. And this machine is actually available in market today. And it does single touch and ink. And so this is an evolution of what we've done in the past with our platform with, with ink and with touch to bring you the multi-touch. And what you're showing, just so we get this straight, this is going to be built into Windows 7, multi-touch. Right. Which built we saw in. on the Surface table, which is on the iPhone, it's on a number of other right. products. How important is multi-touch, do you think, going forward in computing? Well, I think it's super important because it's really, so here I am on the screen, it's really re very natural to interact and do things on the screen with multi-touch. And it's much faster to do certain tasks than you would with using the mouse. You know, you had the character entry, which was really kind of slow, and then you had the mouse, which brought it, brought it a little bit faster. And now touch, where you can directly manipulate the things on the screen, really re makes a huge so difference. So out of the box, what you're doing with photos, will be available in Windows 7. You will be able to do these things with photos in Windows 7, yes. And how, you now this is a tiny little computer screen and I'm noticing it's getting dirtier and dirtier, but <laughs> what has to change in My screen? My stock and screen cleaner. Okay, um, what has to change in screen technology? A lot of people have bigger screens. Well, to get this out to people actually using it. Well, what you, we have here is a, the Intrig Corporation has a digitizer that does multi-touch. We've been working really closely with them and other partners for about a year for this. But you're going to see this on all different kinds and sizes and shapes of computers. So if I move over to this one right here, this machine is a LCD touch screen. It's made by ELO uh, Touch Systems, and it's connected to a desktop computer. So you're going to see this in. You have to buy a new screen, right? You need to get a screen. Well, if you buy you the do. Dell XT today, Not today, you'll be able to work okay. with Windows 7. Okay. So you can't just upgrade a computer that doesn't have a touch you screen. You need to have the digitizer, yes. We've been working with the Surface team, and they've been doing multi-touch, and they've been experimenting with user interface around multi-touch for several years now. And we have the Surface platform running right, on top the of the Windows thing. platform. So you want to go ahead and play in here and see how responsive and fast and, and natural and real it feels. You almost have to dry your hands off after you're done playing with it. I'll show you something a little more useful. We're going to open up an application called Concierge. And this is something the Surface team's been working on that helps you uh, find where you're at I in like the that. United States oh, and do cool. different okay, things. Cool. So here we are with uh, You Are Here. We'll go ahead and zoom in to where we are here in Carlsbad. Now, this is getting live data off the Internet and updating it. Uh, the Concierge app lets you um, go and find things that are close to where you're located. So okay. if I go ahead and click that, it shows me that there's a cafe here. It's actually a, a Starbucks. Excellent. Not yeah. really a good time for me to go there now. Right. But I do want to go to um, down to SeaWorld while I'm here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom down and scroll. I know it is pretty close down here in Mission Bay somewhere. Go find Mission Bay. Oh, there we go. Um, and let's go ahead and switch over to the topographical view. Now, this is getting live data off the internet, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. I start to see some of this stuff. If I think if I go far enough in, we might actually be able to see Shamu in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to zoom back out. Now, I want to get driving directions too here, so I'll go ahead and uh, Search for Julie, the park. Julie, is this, is this app we're looking at going to be part of Windows 7, or is it an example of an app that could be written for Windows this 7? This is an example of an app that could be written for Windows 7. But then you have to go to this this always. Well, you don't always have to go to the keyboard. Lots of, uh, like I showed in the Paint program, you can touch it, the screen all around. But really what you want to be able to do is use touch when it makes sense, the mouse when it makes sense, and the keyboard when it makes sense. So it's not about complete replacement of the mouse. So it's a combination of both what works best. And we will have an on-screen keyboard as well. So go here to SeaWorld Park. It's showing me right where it is. So if I can go ahead and get driving directions to here. It's going to zoom back out, show me those directions, and bring up a little bit of directions. So you start seeing you know, some of the things that are possible with and this And it needs system. to be sent, presumably. Right. 
what if I'm moving windows around on my screen? I'm doing all the things I do with a mouse. Am I going to be able to do those things with multi-touch? Yes, now? you will. You'll be able to do them with both single and multiple touch. And we're rethinking about how the user interface works in order to accommodate the hit targeting. So there'd be specific gestures I would do that might Absolutely. close a window or enlarge right. a window like, or something. Sort of like iPhone, huh? Um, you know, where you would touch, touch kind of thing. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, I can't help noticing, maybe maybe over here, that the taskbar doesn't look like the taskbar. Is that That's also a, a touch thing? Different. What's the deal? What is this? Um, it's something we're working on for Windows 7 that I'm not supposed to talk about right now today. <laughs> <laughs> but here's an uh, where the natural user interface, you can kind of see how this is something you couldn't do with the mouse or the right. keyboard or anything else, and where you know, touch really makes a big difference and the different kinds of things. And we Steve had that in Windows 1.0, but you had to use the mouse, and it was not 3D. <laughs> and we had keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was like so, all so you just touch or something. Yeah, just touch the keys. So it has that kind of quickness. Would this uh -huh. be bigger? Because, you know, it's just a sample The app, keyboard so. on an iPhone just did, so you could control that in a second. So just like that. Yeah. So that's, well, thanks. Thanks, that's all I was going to show. Thanks very much for the opportunity to show it to you. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. Thank you.